Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's time to take global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Professor Camilo Sanifage. He's from the Department of Political Science, Bayero University, joining us from Kano. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. For having me. All right, fantastic. We'll be starting with the nation this morning, and the nation leads with how federal government's one trillion in IRS stimulus package will ref replace the economy, and that is being said by experts. Now, we know that the president, the federal government rather, has rolled out a lot of initiatives, a lot of infrastructure development um, that are to help with the economy. But do you think it's going to have a significant um, you know, reflection on what we expect for our economy? Um, I am very much uh, pessimistic about it. Um, the policy is laudable, is good, uh, at least given the situation that we are in. But why I'm pessimistic is that one, you know, it's the usual thing. We plan things and we don't actually implement them. So that will have been a major challenge for the uh, policy. Uh, secondly, is the issue of corruption. No matter what we do, uh, even if the government were to actually invest in it, then it will be, you know, a channel for some people to enrich themselves. So given these two factors, I think that is why uh, I say I'm pessimistic. And the third reason is the fact that uh, these policies are coming at a time when the country is highly indebted. So. We can't borrow money and keep on pumping in this area, so we'll remain in the debt trap. So this is these are some of the reasons why I'm a little bit pessimistic. But like I said, the, the idea is good, but these are the challenges that will make it uh, highly unrealistic. So let's talk about corruption for a bit. Um, I mean, it's good that they have these ideas and they say this is what we're going to do. But, for instance, the coastal... Um, highway from Lagos to Calabar is way more expensive than the highway from Cairo to South Africa. And that's just, and that is even like one of the longest in Africa. But we're looking at, he, we're looking at what we're trying to do here in Nigeria and it's taking a whole lot of money. A lot of times there are people who are in government and they over budget for their own personal gain. So if we're going to have all of this, how are we sure that every money that is being doled out to for for infrastructure for the development of Nigeria is actually not just going to go into someone's pocket. Walk me through that. Yeah, yeah. You see, uh, the the uh, Cairo Johannesburg uh, highway that you are talking about is about uh, ten thousand kilometers, uh, I guess. And what we have is uh, about just seven hundred kilometers. Yeah. And uh, the cost of ours is over ten times what uh, has been planned on that issue. So I think this is where what I'm saying that you see there is high level of corruption and people make it like it is a cash cow. Mm. So that is why it is very very expensive uh, for us to have such infrastructure because it will be over-inflated. Uh, and then, uh, at the end of it all, uh, perhaps if care is not taken up to the end of the government's time, even if they happen to have, uh, let's say, a second term, probably the thing may not be a reality. So it will be, after we have got, it have guzzled a lot of money, at the end of it is likely going to be an abandoned project or incompleted project. And if care is not taken, if another government comes, uh, it may not continue with that one. It will now start thinking of initiating new mm -hmm. uh, program uh, in its own name. And that uh, will be another way. So I think the best way we do that one to enable us benefit from that, one, we have to realistically fight corruption in the area. Mm -hmm. Second, we have to also take a necessary overblowing of the cost. Yeah. And thirdly, we have to emphasize, make it in a way that there should be continuity in public policies. Whatever one government uh, initiates, let the other government that comes uh, to, you know, implement it, to execute it, to finish it. Mm. Perhaps what we have to do is maybe to have a legislation 
that uh, will make it illegal for any government to abandon ongoing project. Perhaps mm -hmm. that is one of the ways that we can pose uh, this issue of continuity of public policy. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think continuity um, for projects is paramount in the sense that you don't want to abandon projects. And I think there was a report a few weeks ago that said there were so many abandoned projects in Nigeria. And sometimes I wonder, uh, the, the current administration, the, the, they're the ruling power, and they were there for about eight years. And you have another um, a successive government with the same party and sometimes you still hear of abandoned projects, especially when you know that it is the same party. You should have a mandate. You should have certain policies. You should have things that you say, these are the, these are the rules, these are the principles that guide us as a party. And these are the projects that we want to embark on as a party, not just as an individual that is, you know, president of go or governor or anything, but you're looking at holistically what the party wants to do. Certain projects the party w wants to take, and then you just continue it with a successive government. And like you said, I totally agree with the legislative having to put certain, um, you know, rules in place that no abandoned project, because that's the only way we can start to develop our nation the way we want it to be. Okay, another headline here says inflation rate may drop to 29% by year end. And that is a PwC report. Now, I smiled at that when I saw it because I said, isn't that, isn't that you know, just wishful thinking? Do we really think inflation rate might drop to 29% when currently is about 40%? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a very wishful thinking. Uh, everybody will want inflation to come down. If for us, if it, uh, if wishes were horses, mm. you know, everybody will ride it and uh, that will we, uh, ride it. We will be very much happy if inflation will come down to zero. But the fact is that you don't wish uh, things uh, just to happen without taking any concrete uh, step. Actually, it is highly unrealistic to expect that uh, inflation, which is around 40 percent, that uh, it will come down to 20-something uh, percent. I, I, I think it's just a wishful thinking. The reason is that look at all what the government is doing. Uh, there is no concrete step to address these uh, issues. I said last week we mentioned it was it last week or the before. You see, when uh, countries like uh, Argentina had similar problem, what they did to bring down inflation was to cut the go the cost of governance. And by the time they cut the cost of governance by fifty percent, inflation came down with more than fifty percent within two months. But here we are, uh -huh. we know instead of looking at the way cut cost of governance, we are even increasing it the more, and we expect inflation will come down. It will never come down the way we are going. I'm sorry it is uh, too harsh, but I think it will uh, not come down unless we take positive measures to bring it down. So what are some positive measures that you think we can actually do to bring them down? Yeah, one of it is uh, we now have to cut the cost, uh, cost of governance. governance. Mm -hmm. By the time you cut uh, the cost of governance, uh, you will definitely bring down inflation. Secondly, we have to take the bitter pill of uh, stopping cutting borrowing. You know, by the time you keep on borrowing uh, this and this and and so on, uh, you know, uh, 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 the inflation will be high. Uh, thirdly, we have to also cut the issue of uh, interest rate mm -hmm. because if and so long as the interest rate is very high, uh, you are now making it difficult for private and companies, you know, to borrow money and invest. We shouldn't expect now uh, with our own liberalized uh, economy that we are trying to borrow. We expect that the government will be, will be the alpha and omega. We have to uh, allow to create a conducive environment for things to operate. And uh, so the more you have tax also, the more you now have uh, a, a interest rates very high, the more you borrow, the more you now have a, a huge government expenditure. All these things will never bring down uh, inflation. In, in fact, even one of them is enough uh, to raise inflation, but we have multiple dimensions of it. So I think these are the measures that the government, some of the measures rather that the government has to take.
cut interest rates, cut the taxation, and uh, you know, cut the uh, government uh, expenditure, and check the issue of corruption and other things. So this will now create a conducive atmosphere uh, to realistically face the issue of uh, inflation in Nigeria. All right, let's move over to The Guardian. Um, I would not start with the major headline here. So let's look at mayhem looms in North over hardship, Lukman warns. I mean, you are in the North, you're in Kanu, um, and we're seeing mayhem. And I don't think it's particular to the North because I think everywhere, because we've seen, you know, little protests, pockets of that spring up in different parts of the country, especially with hardship in the country. But I want to get your take. How is it in the North? What's happening there? Yeah, you see, uh, there is uh, an easy calm here, but actually it's uh, like what the Sultan said, we are live, have, sitting on a cake of gunpowder. Gun because, yeah, the, the situation is such that if you see the level of poverty uh, in the country and you see the pool, most of them are young people, you know, energetic, and there is nothing that they have. Uh, so I think it is a dangerous thing. You, you find out that Many families uh, cannot afford uh, one square meal a day. And then there is this problem of poverty. So I think this is a very serious thing. It is a time bomb which uh, is a, should have been a source of concern to our leaders and to the government. Look at what, what is happening in Kenya. Okay, and you know there is contagious effect also. Uh, there is copycat mentality. So when people see something, you know, operating in other places and it succeeds, especially now the youth in that place, they are able to force the government to retract, and uh, we have worse situation than that. So it is a very dangerous thing. Actually, it is not only north, but look at it all over the country it is there pocket not pocket yeah pocket here and there unless we we, we quickly uh, address the issue uh when it is when it gets out of hand we should be very uh, worried about it look mm -hmm. at uh, like what happened with uh, NSAS when it started so yeah. all these are the things that should have told our leaders that uh, actually there is a serious problem People are groaning, they are complaining, but the government and the leaders keep on uh, telling them to sacrifice, tighten your belt, mm -hmm. and uh, they have not seen the leaders making any sacrifice. On the contrary, they see the leaders say, uh, you know, uh, engage in flamboyant and extravagant uh, expenses. So I think uh, uh, it is a very worrisome situation. Mm. All right, so I know that a lot of um, this stuff we're talking about stemmed from corruption. And there's a headline here. It was, it was one of our top trending stories this morning. And it says, how Buhari's government failed to recover $69 billion looted fund. And that is by Obono Obla, he alleges. Right. I think he was speaking in the podcast and he was just talking about, he called several names and he was talking about corruption and saying, you know, that was even the reason why he was being displaced from his office. But the crux of the matter is we allow our politicians to steal so much money and there is no consequences for that. So they live the extravagant lifestyles. They put their children in schools abroad. Meanwhile, here in Nigeria, the villages they are from, they don't have schools there. The children are probably sitting on the trees to learn. They don't have primary health care centers. The people are dying because if they cannot treat malaria, then they would die. So they don't even have monies for medication and all of that. But you're seeing them loot so much. And in fact, there was a story about, you know, one of the former governors that was said he, well, allegedly that he stole about 80 billion naira. So what can we do to start to curb corruption in Nigeria to ensure that our leaders are accountable to us? Because true democracy should be listening to the people, doing what is best for the people. And because your primary responsibility is to ensure the security and welfare of the people, that's what you should even be doing in the first place. So how can we start to demand for that from the government officials? You see, wherever uh, the fight uh, against corruption or crusade against corruption succeeds, 
um, uh, rule of law prevails. So that is one of the things, that is the fundamental thing that we should have in terms of fighting of, uh, corruption. It, is, it should be a holistic kind of uh, fight against it. And what uh, rule of law said is that uh, the basic thing when you have uh, corruption cases, you investigate, you establish, and there should be, once you, somebody is found guilty, there should be no secret counts. But uh, what we have is that, um, uh, you know, corruption, uh, even the agencies that are used for corruption, they are now used as uh, hunting dogs, okay? They are set against uh, people that are perceived to be not in line, not, not, or rather, let's say, enemies of uh, those in power. So that is why they send, uh, they send the way anti-corruption agencies to after them. But if we can have a realistic, uh, objective, and, you know, a justice, uh, a justified and justice uh, kind of approach it, then we can, we can arrest it. But provided some people are treated with kid gloves, only when they are, uh, uh, you know, out of paper, that is when we now really face it. And most of the time, you see that uh, in the public, uh, I mean, in the newspapers, in the, the media, they will say this is uh, investigated uh, for social amount of money. And this one, most of them who are not supposed to even be uh, allowed to hold public positions, they are the ones making the policies now. People with uh, corruption cases that are not resolved, they are the ones now making uh, policies. So how can you have it? You know, one thing with corruption is, as you are fighting corruption, corruption is fighting back. And especially in our own situation, where the corrupt people are the mostly people in power, so they cannot allow it to succeed. Unless we have, you know, real rule of law, uh, we cannot be able to uh, face corruption squarely. And then also in the society, it is also part of our own responsibility. If we have a, a government laws to, you know, give teeth to it, then also in the society we should not condone it. Because what we are having now in Nigeria is that if somebody is a pauper today, and he's in public uh, office and become uh, richer than his state, people will start welcoming him, giving him title, giving him their, giving mm. him their daughters to marry, and so on, giving him all sorts of honors. Where in the past, you know, was uh, our culture ostracized uh, such kind of people, but now we are glorifying them. So mm. it takes uh, two to tango. We have to do it by uh, the people, and then there should be laws, and then, uh, that is how we can be able to check corruption. All right. Thank you so much. Um, another story here says refineries to begin operations before January. Senate assures. Well, I don't know if we can really take that as some form of assurance because you hear of so many promises and we've heard, oh, don't worry, the refinery will start before June. Don't worry, this is going to happen. Anyways, do, we, do you believe them? Do you think... Um, truly, the refineries will begin operations before January. And then is there going to be a significant impact, um, you know, with the prices of these commodities? Now I'm talking about PMS, DPK, and kerosene as well. You see, this is one of the problem of pale promises. By the time one keeps on making promises and not more people in it, there will be a trust deposit, a trust gap between the, uh, the leaders and the late. Nigerians have a wide gap of trust between them and the leaders. So I, we, I am part of that. I will not believe these things to happen. After all, our pioneers have been in comatose for how many years? Okay, that is why we are having problems. Even last week, Dangote came, uh, came out and said that uh, what you call, uh, I think, the domestic and uh, external you know, uh, people who that are sabotaging uh, 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 the, the whole process. So I think, say in January, uh, it's not realistic. Even if it is January 2030 that we say they are going to have it, I don't think it will be realistic because of the challenges that we have. After all, the 
A failure of the refineries is what people get. They, it's a cash cow, so they will not allow it to happen. And secondly, like I said earlier on, if you look at all this, what the Senate and other, all the leaders are saying, if you ask them what is your plan to make them work, there is no plan. So you cannot just sit down and say, they, okay, oh, your strategy, what you want to do. You cannot just sit down and say, okay, but so, 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 they will start working. Yeah. Uh, you know, if there is determination, they, they would. Look at uh, how much Dangote is spent to have a fresh uh, new refinery. What we have been spending, spending there yearly on turnaround maintenance on this is more than what Dangote is spent. So I think the huge corruption there will not allow it to happen. And secondly, even if they happen uh, to work, they may help in a way, but uh, in, in terms of availability of uh, the commodity, they may help in little way in terms of bringing the cost, but uh, they will not solve this problem uh, because it will be insignificant. And because, you know, look at uh, what Dangote said, that he has to import oil, uh, you know, crude oil, in order to get uh, uh, his needs. Okay, so I think this is what is going to happen. And look at how many times we have uh, illegal bunkering and other things. All these things are the challenges that uh, uh, will make it highly uh, realistic for us to have, um, for the uh, refineries to take off or to start functioning well by January, as they said. Mm. Okay, um, let's look at the Nature News. Now, Nature News leads with probe palm oil levy revenue in CBN since Obasanjo's tenure. And that is by um, the ex-speaker of the House of Representatives, um, Yakubu Dugar. And he says, um, says Nigeria can make 16.2 trillion naira in five years. So he was talking to President Tinubu, telling him that we need to invest in palm oil. Right. And, you know, we can make this amount of money in, in about five years. But my question is, him saying we need to probe palm oil levy. Do you think that there is really a lot of corruption happening, even in the agricultural sector as well? Now, I know that palm oil was one of the ways we really generated um, revenue, right, in, in times past. And we were like the leading exporters of palm oil before Malaysia took over. And it is rumored that Malaysia came here to Nigeria, took our seedlings and started producing producing palm oil and right now they are the um, leading exporters of palm oil but are we still making so much money that people are still stealing from us meanwhile well we know that we can make this amount of money yeah you see it is uh, unfortunate that uh, it is not alleged i mean <clears throat> really we are the one who assisted malaysia with uh, the seedlings and uh, look at it it is now world uh, uh, producing uh, yeah. country palm oil producing country yes this issue of investigating what uh, dogara is said is the fact that you see uh, the government uh, or successive government have tried to now invest, put in some money so as to revive the uh, sector. And uh, like all other sectors, once you have such things, people will corner the money and now steal it. So the only thing is that will help us is to work with what he said. Let's investigate this area. After all, huge amount of money has been invested in that one. Yeah. And let's not make it a window dressing just by investigating and allowing the report to gather dust, Pin uh, punish those who are found culpable in mm -hmm. the area. So if you do that, uh, now you will restore justice in the place, and now you may be able to revive that one. Because people are getting money out of it. Okay, after all, the government has invested. Otherwise, it will go down the drainage. Already he is talking from time of Obasanjo's uh, time to date, which means the whole 24 or 25 years yeah. of our uh, democratic, democratic governance, the, we are experiencing this kind of thing. So unless we investigate, unless we now use the investigative report and take appropriate action, 
we cannot be able to recover. But actually, actually, if we pay attention to the agricultural sector, uh, we are going to diversify the, our economy and we are going to reduce our vulnerability to uh, our over-dependence on oil. And secondly, we are going to, you know, uh, strengthen the economy and we are likely, not even likely, we are definitely going to come out of the inflation if uh, we diversify, we can get out of not only inflation but the whole economic crisis. So one of the reasons is we are over dependent on one sector and there is huge corruption, but so by diversifying we are going to kill more than two birds with one stone. Yeah, I know fighting corruption will really, really help. And I, and I think it's important that we're looking at other sectors as well, because agriculture is something that really sustained us for a long time as a nation. And we can't just, you know, forget agriculture because now there is a new baby in town, which is the oil boom. And everything we're doing now, we're fixating on, on, on crude Right, but we can still make money from crude and from other measure, other other sectors as well. So we can still make money from crude. We can still make money from agriculture. We can still make money from tourism. We can still make money from education. There are so many channels that we can explore. Even as a human being right now, they tell you do not have only one source of income. So I'm wondering why the federal government would just still decide that it's only one source of income that they're fixated on. It's important that we look at other ways to generate revenue and ensure that our economy is sustainable for all Nigerians. Okay, finally, let's move over to the business NG. The business NG leads with federal government faces scrutiny over controversial multi-budget implementation. The writers here says executing four budgets simultaneously, a recipe for frivolity, and that's been said by OB. Um, another says proposal to run four budgets simultaneously is an anomaly, and that has been said by budgets. What do you think about this? You know, four budgets yeah, at the same see, time simultaneously. Yeah, you see, this is this is one of the things that will put us on, uh, in world record. Uh, at a one time, uh, at the same time, or at a single time, we are trying to, uh, you know, juggle and, uh, you know, operate uh, four different budgets. One, uh, the government wants to, you know, to, to get, in part, it has gotten the approval uh, to continue with the supplementary budget of 2023. And then it is one budget. And then there is a, going to be another supplementary. And then the continuation of the previous budget. So I think this, uh, you know, it shows the, the, the desperate nature, how we now keep on uh, trying to grapple with this, try to, uh, to grapple with uh, this thing. And uh, it will not take us anywhere with that. There will be confusion in the place. There will be uh, so much corruption. There will be so much wastage in terms of trying to uh, play. After all, where are the, where is the money uh, for us to have uh, for different budgets in just one single year. You know, we already are planning with three. Uh, we are halfway through uh, the 2024 budget. And as the president said, he is likely going to have a supplementary budget. All these things, besides showing the, the, the confusion, besides having the, the difficulty, shows that uh, we cannot plan even for a single year. A budget is supposed to be a one-year plan, uh, OK? But here we are, we cannot, so it is becoming part of our habit that we must have a, a supplementary budget. And mm -hmm. now there is a new dimension that we are going to have approval to now continue with the previous budget. So uh, it is totally going to be chaotic. And uh, it is, uh, like I said, going to uh, put us in, in public ridicule in the uh, community of nation in the world that here we are trying to juggle for budgets at the same time. Mm. All right, this is such a great way to wrap it up here on the segment. Professor, I want to say thank you for coming. It was lovely reviewing the papers with you as always. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so I'm speaking with Professor Kamilu Sani Fage. He's from the Department of Political Science by Euro University, Kano. And we've just been taking global stories, making headlines in our national dailies. We'll go on a short break, and when we return, we're looking at our first hot topic. Well, um, this talks about big players behind oil theft, like leaving Abuja. Well, we'll find out. Please stay with us. <laughs> 